Hi, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, we're going to learn the two to four player game Vikings on Board, designed by Charles Chevalier, Pascal Pellemont, and Catherine Dumas, and published by Blue Orange Games. It's an exciting time to be a Viking. The long ships are getting ready to go out on their explorations, and you're going to ensure you have the richest merchandise and the strongest sailors. Or rather, you'd better, because the other Vikings are prepared to steal the best ships right out from underneath of you. So join me at the table, and let's learn how to play. To set up, place the game board in the middle of the table. Now each player chooses a color and takes the matching components. These include a scoring circle that you'll set in front of yourself, along with four double-sided gambling tokens that you'll place near it, number side down so your opponents don't know which token is which. You also collect a number of Viking figures based on the number of players. Four in a two-player game, and two in a four-player game, or, as we're setting up here, three in a three-player game. Now take one Viking from each player, mix them up, and then randomly place them onto the spaces that you'll find on this side of these three symbols. The rest of the Vikings are then placed based on the pattern you'll see on the screen as taken from the rulebook, which I'll follow as well. This row of symbols is known as the village, and the Vikings all start lined up on this side of it. But there's also a row of spaces on the other side as well, and we'll see how those are used later. But for now, place this black leader token on the space found here. These are the market value tokens, and you put them onto the first spaces of each of the rows of this track, representing metal, hides, and grain. Then you'll collect these 15 supply tokens, shuffling them face down and putting seven of them in this position and eight in a stack here. The game also comes with several pre-assembled ship pieces, Find the seven stern pieces that have this shape and place them in an area beside the board. Now place one of the eight bow pieces between each of the wooden posts found on this harbor. These areas are known as the moorings. The remaining boat pieces each show one of the clan symbols marked here. Randomly place all of these remaining boat pieces in rows of three behind each bow, ensuring that no symbol appears on more than one piece within each row. Keep in mind, no matter how many players you have, you'll always use all of the ship pieces. And that's the setup. In Vikings on Board, players will be manipulating the ships to gain influence over them, which is represented by the number of your colored shields along the edges. If you have the most influence, then you'll have a chance at gaining some of the goods on board. And if you don't think you'll have enough influence over a ship, you can still gain points by betting on which player will. The game is played over a series of rounds taken in turns by players starting here and following the order of the Vikings on this row until you get to the end. On a turn, in this case blues, as they're in the first position here, you pick this Viking up and then place it on any of the empty spaces on the opposite side of the village and then resolve the action shown there by the icon. We'll go over all the actions in a bit, but once a player has completed theirs, the next player in the row takes their Viking and places it on any empty space of this side and resolves that corresponding action. Players do that all the way down this line until they're on the same side of the village as the leader. When placing your Viking, you must always put it into a space where you can perform the corresponding action. But as the spaces get filled up, you may find yourself with no options but spaces where you can't perform the actions. In which case, pick any one of them and then simply do nothing. But now, let's learn about these different actions and how they work. If you take this space, nothing happens immediately, but at the beginning of the next round, you'll get first pick of the available actions. You complete this action by moving one ship piece of your color to the front of its current ship. This will help you break ties for influence of a ship, as we'll learn about later. Now this action lets you move a ship piece of your color from any part of another ship to the back of a different ship. Always make sure you close any gaps that have been created. Also keep in mind no ship can have more than five body pieces, so this ship is currently at its max. This action allows you to secretly take one of your gambling tokens to place face down on any of the colored empty spaces in front of a ship. The color you place into indicates the one that you think will have the greatest control of that ship when it sets sail. The secret value on the token represents the points that you'll score if you're correct. But again, you don't show that to the other players. With this action, you draw a token from the top of this stack and place it onto the bow piece of any ship currently within the harbor. Supplies are always placed on the bow piece of a ship so that they are never moved around. To resolve this action, choose either metal, hides, or grain and increase its value by one. Over the course of the game, the values can never exceed four or be decreased. This action allows you to move any body piece, even if it doesn't share your color, and move it to the back of any other ship. 
With this action, you can either place a bet, as we saw before, or move a bet that was already placed to a new open circle. For this action, you'll take three of the tokens from the top of this stack, secretly examine them, and then place one in the bow of any ship. The remaining two you then place back under the stack randomly. This set sail action requires you to take one stern piece from the supply here and put it in front of yourself. It will be used once all the other players have finished taking their actions, as we'll see. The final action allows you to exchange any two body pieces of your choice from any two different ships. Once all of the Vikings have been moved to the opposite side of the village, now check to see if anyone took the set sail action. They'll have a stern piece in front of themselves, and now it's time for them to pick a ship to add it to, and then push that ship away from the harbor as it sets sail. The ship that is chosen must have at least one supply token on it, unless none of the ships have any supply tokens, in which case you can pick any of them to set sail. As a ship leaves, you need to determine who controls it, so count the number of shields in each player's color along one side of the body piece. Pieces. The player with the most of that color has first control. The player with the second most has second control, and so on. Now if there's a tie, as there is here, between blue and yellow, the player with the piece closest to the front wins the tie. So in this example, blue has first control, yellow has second control, and green has third control. And with less than four players, you still count the non-player colors, as they can win control as well. Now in order of control, each player takes turns claiming any one supply token from the ship, putting it face down on their scoring circle. Players claim tokens until they run out, meaning that some may not get any, or sometimes others will get several. As an example, if blue had been the only color on this ship, then it would have gained both of the tokens. Either way, once supplies have been collected, the ship can be set aside or even returned to the box. If you have less than four players, then some of the Viking colors will not be controlled by anyone. In that case, if a non-playing color would be due to collect supply tokens, red in this case, which has first control, the player to the left of the player, who would normally be next to take a token, so whichever player is seated left of the green player, would instead choose one of these tokens and permanently remove it from the game. Then the next player would go, as usual, collecting a supply token if there is one, and placing it on their score tile. Now that we understand how setting sail works, let's learn one more change to the set sail action if you only have two players. Let's say we have a two-player game between yellow and blue. After one of them has taken the set sail action, the other player immediately takes any Viking figure from a color not being used in this game and places it onto a ship body piece that matches their color. This Viking cannot be taken from that piece and will always travel with it even if it's moved around by other actions. Do keep in mind though, at most, only one Viking may occupy each body piece. Now, when checking for control of a ship that has set sail, a Viking on a body piece counts as an extra shield of that piece's color. So in this case, blue would have three shields, Red would have three shields, but because the blue piece is closer to the front of the ship, it has first control and get first pick of the supply tokens. After a ship has set sail, if there's a gambling token on the space of the color that had first control, in this case, blue had first control and green had placed one of their gambling tokens on the blue space, the player who made the bet moves that token to their scoring circle. Any tokens on spaces at that location will remain there, but they can be moved later using this action. I should mention players can check their supplies and their bets at any time, but they're not allowed to reveal them to the other players. The round ends after players have completed all of their actions and any ships that were set to sail have been resolved. You then move the Viking leader to the opposite side of the village and start a new round, this time with Vikings taking actions in order based on the new arrangement here, but now moving to the opposite side of the village. So when taking actions, you're not only considering which actions you want, but also where it's gonna place you in the turn order for the next round. The game will continue until seven of the ships have set sail. At that point, the game ends immediately, and you'll ignore the remaining ship still in the harbor. Players now total the value of the tokens on their scoring tiles, with supplies equaling the values shown here on this track. The green player has a fur, and that's worth three points, and a grain, which is worth two, and a three-point gambling token for a total of eight. The player with the most points wins. In the case of a tie, as we have here between the green and the yellow player, the tied player with the most supply tokens wins. If there's still a tie, then the tied player with the highest value from supply tokens wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied players share the victory. And that's how you play Vikings on board. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.